Hey everybody, it's the Epistemologist here today, and we're going to have another misconception that we find, and this one is authority is good. So why don't you give me a little... Another <laughs> another mis misconception in our series. This is number... Should we number them? No. Or is, does it matter? Doesn't. This is an unordered set, everyone. Yes. So, <laughs> it's so, bullet points, yeah, not no, In no particular order. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so authoritarianism is good. Is that what you said? Yeah. The misconception, well, it's more that authority, well, authority. is good. And that's, and that's more about okay. the, the ideas of like saying, well, this expert says this and they're the expert. So why would I disagree with them? You're stupid for disagreeing ah. with this expert. They're <laughs> the authority on the matter, but this can apply yeah. to a lot of things. But generally, it's a misconception that authority is always right and good. and mm, At or, least in matters of their expertise. Yes. That's what I keep hearing. Yes. So this is the, uh, this, this type, kind of authority is authority with respect to knowledge. Mm. Now, there are other kinds of authorities. I think there's certain governmental institutions. And we can go on to our nuanced views later, yeah. But that's something else. In this case, we're talking about like knowledge authorities, like experts and specialists, and scientists, data, data, <clears throat> even. It can even not yeah. even be a person. It can be the data shows this. Although, ultimately, that is still a person because mm. all data requires interpretation, and therefore you cannot. I think the category, the the category or the the group that we're, we're we need a label for is touchstone of truth, mm. something like that. Yeah, it's it's. They're they're those they're supposed to be these reliable things that you can go to for good information. Yeah, right? like you'd buy your encyclopedias and they'd have all the knowledge that you would ever want. And but of course, mm. they'd have and they'd, then they'd have to get updated all the time because they're always wrong. <laughs> yeah, they're always wrong. And that's, <laughs> so... and that's one of the the things we don't we like to acknowledge is that even experts can be wrong. Yes, but moreover, like. Experts might just have a bad day. Like they might just be, they might have too much to drink or like uh, suddenly they might have some, uh, some reason to say, to say something they wouldn't normally say, you know? So you, you, I, it's never really a good, good thing to take someone's reputation or word or past or history. Right. Yeah. And, and just assume that from here on out, it's going to be the same quality. <laughs> Uh, so, <clears throat> but what we can expect, I think, from experts are good explanations of various kinds. So that's that is a good thing. I it, think it's uh, not what we. They might not give you a good explanation, but no, I think it's <clears throat> I think it's different than that. I think it's not that um, <clears throat> you can expect experts to have good explanations. I think that if they're an expert, they should be expected to have good explanations. So, if you want to convince me of something. Explain it to me, and and hmm. I will generally be convinced if it's a really good explanation of what's going on. The, a Makes lot of people, a lot of like experts, and I'm using quotes, experts are people for whom they they do not want to explain themselves. They would rather have their PhD or have their expertise be self evident, and they expect oh, people, or they can. They would expect got, people like, a cr credentials they could flash. Yeah, and and they would expect <laughs> people to recognize badge. that that badge <laughs> or credentials or or even to the point of jargon, right? Jargon is a is a good sort of example of something how that how that can really trick you. If you speak in jargon and people don't understand what you're saying, they shouldn't just accept what what you're saying. That shouldn't be an automatic right. acceptance. And well, the... there wouldn't be any reason for you to understand what they're saying right. at that point. Right. So, like, because... if they're if they're communicating to you in some code you can't decode, yeah. Then why why would you be compelled by that? You sh you should not. You know, like just because they drive a flashy car or like or they have they... a PhD <laughs> after their name, they... or, uh, you know, it's you should. Or they have a professor title or something. It shouldn't be. You shouldn't be persuaded by that because they're not explaining it well. And they may may very well be brilliant and they may very well be be right. But the problem is yeah. in their poor explanation, 
to expect that you're going to be convinced by their poor explanation is wrong. And to expect that yeah, that... Yeah, I've had people... Yeah. Really? So, sorry, I've had people, really smart people, talk about some complex thing, and I'm not getting it. Yeah. And that means the problem is their explanation. Yes. They Even if I was half incapacitated, that's the challenge for them. Right. Right? Even if I'm very sleepy and I can't get my brain to work, the challenge really is on the communicator to... to to speak to that audience. If the communicator so wants to, why, if the communicator wants to be understood, the, blaming the audience. Yeah, and that's the goal, right? Right. <laughs> that's their goal. And the audience wants to be persuaded. Generally, generally. speaking. <laughs> uh, there are Generally speaking. There is a, a mode in which people are debating and and at that point people don't want to be persuaded and they will actively resist being persuaded. However, Right. At that point, you're not de- you're not the you're not trying to persuade the the debater. You're trying to persuade the audience around them, and that's a different sort of right. form of argument or a form of discussion. But ultimately, whenever you see an expert trying to go off on somebody and saying, "I'm an expert. I have all this data, and I know all the things," and they're not being persuasive, but they're trying to rely on their expertise to be persuasive, that's a trap. That's a misconception, and you should yeah, not but, believe it. Yeah, there's a difference between understanding that, they're, that they have really good knowledge and understanding that they're just not being able to communicate that to you. Right. And that becomes a bigger issue. So and, really, these touchstones of truth, was there something else you wanted to say about well, that? Well, no, I don't, I'm fine. Okay. But these touchstones of truth all have the same sort of look to them. Really, people are looking for reliable sources of information. And while we can debate about degrees of reliability between sources, there really isn't such a thing as an actually reliable source. They just don't exist. And for many people who are really just looking for the right sources of information and the truth, where is the truth, right? Yeah. They, these people are going to be dismayed almost to, to recognize that reliable sources don't exist and authorities with respect to knowledge don't exist. It, because recognizing that means to, to many people looking for touchstones of truth, it means that knowledge is unattainable. Mm. And that is almost reason to despair. That, that's a terrible situation to be in. The reality is knowledge is attainable, and it doesn't mean that. Right. It's just they're going about trying to attain the knowledge in the wrong way. And so that's why we're sort of going about like talking about this misconception. Well, everywhere. well they don't understand that they're they're defining knowledge in an improper way because and this is something that kind of speaks to relativism which i don't particularly like but it ha- does have a kernel of truth in that uh it's up to you to figure out what's going on you can't rely on other people or other sources of information other than as sources of inf- information about what's going on you are ultimately going to decide and even if you try to... You're ultimately going to decide... Yeah. If, what... Like, okay, like yeah. the voice of God argument? Yeah. Even if God spoke to you. Yes. It's up to you to recognize the voice, interpret what was said, yep. recognize that it was actually God and not some other... Entity. Entity. Yeah. It, it wasn't the government beaming in thought patterns into your brain? Yeah. And pretty much every time you get thought patterns beamed into your brain one way or another through your senses or whatever... Uh, there, are, it's up to you to judge whether it's these are this is worth looking at or not. Yes. And so we're all kind of on our own with respect to knowledge. In a way, that makes you uh, kind of an authority. Yes. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Um, but even then, you aren't an authority because you also could be wrong, and you probably know that better than anyone else. <laughs> And that often you leads. You should anyway, if you're being often, honest uh, with yourself. That's often why people who are looking for the. T- are, that's often often why people are looking for a touchstone of truth is because they recognize they can't always be right because that's almost self evident. They're not always right. Right. Yeah, we're not always right. Uh, no. Obviously, if, if basically this is why we want to encourage conversation is because disagreeing, <clears throat> having dif- different perspectives come mingle basically you can you can learn better where where, what you have wrong what in in what way could you word things better Mm -hmm. 
and so on. And it's it really knowledge is a is attained through error correction. It's right. as simple as that. It's more about learning what's a bad path or what is not a good way of attaining knowledge or understanding things and less about learning what is the source of truth mm. Learn, learning the touchstones it's more about uh, learning yeah. the the so it's less about truth seeking and more about problem hunting yeah well and and you know almost it's almost a meta it's almost we're we have to learn how to understand how to build knowledge how to work with knowledge what tool you know expand our tools that we have and that's why it's we're thinking about doing a logic series as well so please let us know in the comments if you think a logic series is cool and like and subscribe and comment and